Hello, and welcome to the Gaia update for the Libra new moon that's happening on Saturday, September 28th, 2019. I'm Adrienne Lise. Well, this Libra new moon is really a culminating time and an intense time as we have had an incredibly busy September with our personal planets bouncing around the zodiac making powerful t-squares first that mutable t-square with jupiter square neptune now that jupiter square neptune is still in play and very close together but also now particularly our personal planets mercury and venus still pretty close together are now interacting with a cardinal t-square with the nodes of the moon and Saturn right there by the south node of the moon. So Saturn and the south node are exact in their conjunction at the very end of the month for this Libra new moon. And leading up, we've got Mercury and Venus making this T-square. So the nodes of the moon, we've talked about them, and the north node is our future karma. How are we going to get to where we want to go? And the south node, our past karma. What are we dragging behind that's keeping us from moving forward from the past? So we, with Saturn, is also our karma, duty, reality planet. Right there with the south node, it's a karmic purge. Now, but we're kind of getting used to this energy, right? We've had this already twice this year, this exact conjunction of Saturn in the South Node, but it really is an energy of the hammer coming down in our life of like an ending and a new beginning because these are cardinal signs, right? So we're trying to turn that corner. We're trying to start something new, but we haven't ended our endings yet now the reason why we haven't been able to end these endings is because they've been hidden deep in our subconscious that's a lot of this energy of that jupiter and sagittarius craving this expansion this creativity this excitement this meaning and purpose in life and then neptune in at home in pisces speaking to the delusions belief systems and false beliefs that may be keeping us from that life of purpose and now we've got both of these energies in play, both of these powerful aspects of what 2019 is all about. We are facing where we haven't lived our truth and that we might not even know. I mean, a lot of the confusion and the frustration, the feeling stuck feelings that people have been going through this year has to do with not really knowing where they want to go. <laughs> and um, not knowing what the point is of it. Now, this is a good thing. If you've been here, this is actually means that you're taking advantage of this time that we're living in. These astrological energies are not to victimize us. They're here to show us a, a, um, a guidepost of what's trying to happen and our opportunities here. And so the falling away of these false identities, because what's been hidden in our subconscious and these delusions is programming. A lot of times it could be ancestral programs, societal conditioning, but a lot of times we're dealing, we've been dealing with, with this South Node Saturn thing, past life programming of other lifetimes where something happened to us and it created a belief system. And these are powerful forces that have been deeply hidden in our psyche, but have been keeping us and blocking us from the forward motion we wanna have from the true life of purpose that we want to have and it's we're getting to the end of the road and if you're feeling frustrated at not knowing where to go and um, frustrated at putting up and shutting up day after day living in this false reality then you're doing it right and it's being revealed to you right now these deeper delusions these deeper karmic patterns because we have a bloom of these things at the same time so it's like they're almost working together. We got that mutable square, Jupiter square, Neptune being like, hey, why, what, where, what is keep, what's the block around this, um, this deeper meaning, you know? And, and then we've got this cardinal 
cross, cardinal T-square, which is around karma. And when I'm talking about karma, I'm talking about contractual arrangements. You know, so it's like our, we have these belief systems and delusions that are programmed deep in our subconscious, so deep we don't even know they're there, but they're still informing our reality. Then we have contractual arrangements where we've agreed to stay in um, these contracts and to stay in these stuck energies because of loyalties to our family, to other people, to the world, to humanity. Um, and everything right now is pointing to, is asking us, where is your loyalty? And it's interesting because that's bringing up like a lot of feelings in people around like shame and they haven't done it right. They've done something wrong. They've underachieved. They didn't accomplish something. This is part of what we're healing in those deep subconscious delusions because the reason why we're so cut off from our mission and purpose is because we've been thwarted from it again and again and again, often killed or um, betrayed or manipulated by forces on this planet and this evolution that don't want us to succeed. And so then it's happened so many times to a lot of these souls that are the souls, these light worker souls, you that are called to this work. It's happened so many times that you have decided that what I don't want to do that anymore, right? Like anything but that. And so now you're not being persecuted. You're not being killed as far as in this reality. You're still here. You're living and breathing in this life. And what are you going to do about it? because you might not be um, persecuted or killed in the way you were in these past lives, but you're not really actually living either, right? And now we're coming to the end of the road of this, and that has to do with Chiron having moved into Aries. Chiron is our deepest, deepest wounds, and uh, in Aries, it's wounds of the self, where we've compromised who we are in order to survive. And that's exactly what's happened, where these indigo souls, lightworker souls are so far away. They know something's missing, but they don't understand what it is. And so far away from that purpose and that mission from these past lives, because it didn't work out the way you wanted, right? And so that's where this shame and failure energy is coming up. But that's also programming. That's also contracts that are working in our deep subconscious. And so we're like sorting all of this out, but our ability to continue to live um, not true to who we really are, even though we don't really know who we are, we're learning how to do that, but we can't, we're seeing clearly, more clearly, more clearing what we're not, right? Um, we're coming to the end of the road on our ability to continue to put up the charade. Now, that being said, it's kind of a cool energy because we do have all of our personal planets almost in Libra right now with the soul with the equinox the sun moved into the sign of Libra Mercury and Venus already there interacting in this T square um so um Libra has an energy of equanimity harmony uh, peace gentleness um but also comp you know maybe um agreeing so much or being so accommodating that you lose who you are, right? But the Libra energy right now with Mercury and Venus still pretty close together in this square is kind of helping us because it's saying, okay, maybe it's time to speak your truth and live your truth, even though you don't know exactly what that is, but you know what it's not. And um, maybe we can do it in a gentle way that doesn't have to implode, <laughs> you know? And we're trying to work all this out, right? Um, the intense, but this Libra energy is helpful that we can do it in a harmonious and a peaceful way. We can make these changes in our life to empower ourselves, to live more true to ourselves, to make these adjustments, um, but in a way that is gentle and harmonious. Because what's happening right now is that because the sun has moved into Libra, um, we are feeling a square and for this new moon we're going to be still feeling this square leading right up and through this new moon the sun in 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 libra in square to that chiron in aries and so a really powerful energy because the sun is about shining your light and being true to who you are and expressing yourself 
and in square again more square energy more cardinal square energy in chiron there's tension with where you haven't lived your truth so the sun is the leader you know the ruler of leo it's fire sign chiron in aries fire <laughs> you know so we're dealing with some fire but this is good this is a fire in the belly this is the part of ourselves that's saying you know what i can't live a lie even though i don't know what the truth is exactly i can't live a lie anymore you know i can't go on with this this charade and this game of uh pretending that i'm you know just some sort of speck of dust throat floating through this reality and there's a bigger picture here there's a bigger you and there's a bigger expression and this is the sun in square to chiron is like oh it's bringing up some frustration aries is impatient and chiron is impatient in aries with these wounds with staying in victimhood and wants to release from this place come out of the chains of this lower matrix and so it's kind of nice to have the Libra energy to hopefully harmonize um, this deep desire that's blooming, you know? So how many planets involved in a square? It's crazy, almost all of them. Guess what? For this new moon, this Mars is in square to the galactic center, bringing a precursor energy into when Jupiter will make it at home in Sagittarius, it's like its last stop before it moves into Capricorn starting that 2020 astrology. So the 2020 astrology is when Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto all come together in Capricorn. So when in December, when Jupiter moves into Capricorn, it's game on, <laughs> right? But before, just before it does that, it hits the galactic center. This is a destiny point. This is like coming home, like in a dramatic way to what really matters, who you really are, and like the bigger, bigger picture of, of you, your story. The galactic center is in Sagittarius, and it definitely resonates with this energy of this bigger expansive truth of who we are and that destiny the greater destiny because our universe our gal all of this omniverses <laughs> is constantly expanding and you know the earth evolution has been about forces trying to hold back the evolution and it's getting like the clothes are getting too tight you know it's like ill-fitting, it's not working anymore. And it's like, we gotta bust through the lower matrix, right? And um, so pretty powerful that, you know, so we've got Mercury in the square, we've got Venus in the square, we've got Mars in square with the galactic center, we've got Jupiter in square to Neptune, we've got Saturn opposite in square to Mercury and Venus and opposite the North Node uh and uh so it's pretty pretty much a square out there and so the energy of that came through a very beautiful uh, energy and in, in that equinox around turning the corner that's still happening and it's going to happen here for the next week pretty intensely and into october so we're still turning the corner and the, the astrology is so intense with all these squares because guess what? As soon as Mercury and Venus um, fi finish out their uh, square with Saturn and the nodes um, leading up, they go all the way to the end of this month with that energy and it overlaps in when they each come into square with Pluto. Okay, so... Um, that is definitely bringing a bell of the uh, 2020 astrology in these squares of like an intense t-square with saturn in the nodes and then moving right into a square with pluto now pluto and capricorn pluto's the destroyer it wants to break down whatever is not working it definitely has this energy of ego death and if that's the case the structures that are trying to be broken down are these personality constructs so we have all these delusional personality constructs where we had some sort of drama and trauma in a past life that wasn't resolved where we're feeling the shame and failure come up for no reason <laughs> you know and um 
then what happens when those types of things occur, trauma, we get attached to that personality construct because it's like, oh, there's something I need to finish there. Who am I? I got to figure out who I am, right? Um, and so it's like all these unresolved pictures and stories of who we have been that have been unresolved, kind of looming in the closet, right? And um, the karmic purge, the exposure of the d deeper delusions that 2019 has all been about is in a massive culmination. And it's, but the, it's like the universe trying to help us turn the corner. So really powerful and potent energy. Um, this is a massive bloom. Don't take anything personally with Venus in this powerful play of we're feeling both leading up to this moon, new moon. We're feeling that Venus still in the square with Saturn in the nodes and moving into the square with Pluto. Um, and so Venus always, especially in squares, brings up insecurities and questioning, you know, and it's kind of like, it's that part of ourselves that's like, well, um, you know, that's wounded and hurt and maybe shameful that those feelings coming up from these past life stories and then deciding that it might not be worth it to, to go forward. Maybe just stay the same. You know, maybe just hang back, hide out, just keep the status quo and everything will be fine. Right. But that's like our this inner child part of ourselves that's like programmed with fear around these big changes and that's misplaced fear. And so, but we are sorting through kind of like a back and forth, right? With the nodes being so triggered right now, the nodes of the moon, it has that energy of being suspended in time. We're in between the past and the future. And there's this tiny little child inside of us that's hanging there at the precipice going, um, am I worthy? Can I make it? Can I handle it? Am I alone? Am I protected by the universe? Um, and so, Ultimately, it's like this completely chaotic, uh, so much going on in the astrology, but ultimately leading us back to the faith and truth within us of who we really are. Everything is trying to clear away what we're not. So if we're feeling resistant, we're feeling this energy of stress and tension, um, that's maybe where we're holding on to these old ideas of who we are. And when we're holding on to these ideas of who we are, we're holding on to shame and failure stories that are not true. So much is coming through right now and looking at past lives and sessions that um, what might have seemed like a failure or a thwarting or a manipulation or, um, you know, when things didn't work out, you didn't complete your mission. It, it wasn't actually a failure because all you were doing was holding space for a concept of, a beautiful seed that was planted and it got planted and now it's time to put all that old stories away and start to till the garden and start to support the growth of the new but we're not quite there yet we're still turning the corner and know that like it's massive bloom time every issue you've had over the last couple of years is on the surface uh, but an incredibly potent time and this is where we when we stick together and we can just keep breathing and um, understand that uh, we are lightening the load on a massive level and ultimately giving ourselves and perhaps the collective permission to uh, come more true to who we are in the higher vibrational reality of what's available to us as we move into the future so I hope you can join me for an activation. This is going to be 24 hours before the actual full moon. I mean, new moon in Libra. The new moon in Libra is happening um, at, on Saturday, September 28th. And the live activation is going to be Friday, September 27th at noon mountain time, exactly 24 hours before the actual new moon. So we can really get into the energy of this harmonious new start. Part of the Libra energy is, is like that it can help us be nicer to ourselves as we turn this corner and harmonize uh, what, you know, it's interesting because we've got that sun square Chiron and the frustration over not being able to live that truth and shine your, tr your purpose and shine your light. Um, 
Uh, but we also have Mercury and Venus still close together, traveling uh, pretty close together as they go through all of these journeys. And that's giving a voice to this inner child of ours. It's giving a voice to that inner feminine, to that um, the shameful part of ourselves. And just, you know, bringing that little child out of um, that disenfranchised, uh, separated, um, lost and alone little child, bringing it back into the fold um, and giving voice to our, uh, you know, so so there's a lot of opportunity to speak your truth coming from maybe what you didn't, you know, you still don't really know what's true and all that, but, um, but it's also very harmonized by this Libra. And so it's a good time if there's something you've been wanting to say or express to someone else or just express in the world um, it's a really nice time right now to try to go ahead and find the right words to do that in a really gentle and compassionate way rather than the outburst that can come um, with if, if we were only feeling the sun square chiron right now um, and so it's like just a super dynamic time meaning that every minute is different so don't get too attached to these old stories don't get too attached to how you're feeling in the moment and just let this process happen um, so much is happening we got to just kind of get out of the way and trust to in this uh, you know in this turning of the corner because you don't know what's around the corner that's why it's corner right um, and so we don't get to see what it is uh, why or what's really going on <laughs> until we actually get around the corner and so it's gonna be a week or two um, and uh, we'll see what happens. So hang in there. I look forward to connecting with you, bringing harmony and balance and a sweet activation for this Libra new moon on Friday, the uh, September 27th at noon mountain time. That would be 11 a.m. on the in Pacific time. And that would be 2 p.m. on the East Coast. So I hope you'll consider joining. It's $10. And that gives you your the access to the replay immediately. If you can't make the live event, you can just catch the replay. Your intention to join gets your energy in there, gets your questions answered uh, in this channeled presentation. So I look forward to seeing you there or on the next update. Until then, I'm Adrienne Elise. Namaste.